Hello, QST readers and ARRL members worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler. I'm the author of the Ask Dave column. And this is the supplementary video to go along with the May 2025 issue. In there, I have a question from Larry Plum, WA2TLY. And he has a very interesting question. I'll read his original question. I had to edit it for length a little bit for the QST. It says, why would a non-resonant antenna, which would work with a tuner, put out the same RF as a resonant antenna? Seems inherently inefficient. Well, it does work. Now, there are many antenna trade-offs that you can do, like uh, height or the slope or whether you can put in a dipole or some kind of gain antenna, etc. There is always a trade-off. This is just true of antennas. Everything affects everything, okay? This is a 35 foot of hookup wire, okay? Just a little tiny thing. And what we did for our test to see how, what we could match to, we took this and put it out on the porch. And we strung, this is a, an automatic antenna tuner from MFJ called model 993B, as in Bravo, okay? And it's a fully automatic antenna tuner. So normally when you put this at the base of an antenna, you've got to send it power somehow. Well, we did that very easily. We just took a battery out there and, and made it work. It worked just fine. Now on the back, I want you to take a look at this on the back. Okay, the terminal on your right over there, the red one, is for a wire. That means a long wire, a short wire, whatever kind of wire that you happen to have. And yes, this will tune into a wire. Now, one of the things you need to do is get a good ground connection. But we use such a short piece of coax that uh, it was grounded to the lightning ground anyway. And if we'd put in a separate piece of wire to ground it, it would have been about the same length as the coax shield. So we tried this, this little piece of wire, on 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters, 10 meters, and 6 meters. And in every case, the tuner tuned it up with very good SWR. In most cases, 1 to 1, but there was one, I think, on 40 meters where it was 1.3 to 1. It was as good as it could get. Now, I will mention as an aside, we made a mistake when we started this. I still had the internal tuner on the IC7300 on. As soon as we turned that off, working, we had two antenna tuners fighting each other here. So we got it all working and you'll see some pictures of these as we go through them. The point of this exercise was to show the reason that ICOM, Kenwood, and Yesu all make remote antenna tuners is because in Japan, most people have very little space. And so we did the wire directly from the back of this up to the top of the pole, up about uh, 33 or 34 feet. Okay, so it was really slanted like this. And we were able to tune it. And you can tune an even shorter piece of wire if you would like to. Now, what is the compromise? This is a compromise antenna. Now, you with that short piece of wire there can transmit a full 100 watts out of there and it'll go flying off into the ether just fine. The thing is that the antenna, which was too short for 40 meters and didn't work at all on 80 meters, and on 20 meters it was actually a full wavelength, which is really hard to tune, but it tuned it really, really nicely. So it was a longer than need be antenna, so it was very inductive. So what the tuner did with its automatic set of fiddling with things in here, put in capacitance to get it to go right. What is the compromise? The compromise is bandwidth of the antenna. The shorter the antenna compared to the resonant size, the narrower the range over which it will tune. Now with this automatic tuner, if you go to another part of the band, it'll automatically retune for you. And remote antenna tuners from like LDG and so on uh, do that. It's hard to get the MFJ tuners anymore. And then this one is not designed for the outdoors. We just did it outdoors because it was a good thing to do. We went on the following 40 meters. Here's a picture of the front of the radio. Mm -hmm. 
and another picture of the front of the tuner. And you can see what the various values are there. On 20 meters, here's the front of the radio. And here's what the antenna tuner showed. On 15 meters, the front of the radio. And what the antenna tuner showed. We did 10 meters. And just for kicks, we did 50 megahertz. And it tuned. I don't think this thing is designed for six meters, but it does a real nice job. Now, this again, the situation we had was from a corner of the porch, which is entirely outside, up to the antenna pole. We took the other antenna down, so we just have this one little antenna in there. Now, what does this show? This shows that with a little bit of effort, you can make pretty much any antenna resonate on the band you're trying to work. If you use an automatic tuner, it will remember frequencies and what its initial settings were for that. And then it'll sense if that still gives a good tune. If so, it stops there. If not, it will try to retune. So if you're like up at, at 7200 kilohertz, and you decide you're going to do some FT8 for the rest of the evening down at 7074, okay? You can do that using the same, but it will retune, okay? So the compromise for a, an antenna that's not the right length, if it has, if you go straight into the tuner, you're not losing a lot of stuff due to bad SWR on a transmission line for the very simple reason there is no transmission line. It's tuner directly to antenna. And this is something you can use in all kinds of situation. This wire that we use, AWG24, you get some gray wire like that and you hardly see it up there and it'll handle 100 watts. Okay, so there you have it. We did a little demonstration of an antenna that was the wrong length for all the bands we tried to tune it on. And we found that with the standard antenna tuner feeding the antenna directly, we were able to tune it up just fine. You can do the same thing if you get like one of those LDG tuners or something like that. Now, one thing I will point out if you do is often these external antenna tuners need to get powered over the coax. So you need to have a lightning arrestor that will transmit that low voltage across. That's not the norm for polyphaser or for Morgan. It is for Alpha Delta, but the DC continuity lightning arrestors from both polyphaser and Morgan to do that. Okay, so there you go, there you have it. This is an example of what ham radio could look like in a place with hardly any height or anything like that. Now, can you make that wire longer? Sure, it'll change the pattern, of course, but you can make it longer and take it up to the top of a pole and then out to a tree. And all of that creates additional radiation. So there you have it. Glad to talk to you. Please become a member of the ARRL. We're all counting on you to join the League, which is the organization that defends our right to use the airwaves. So, until we next meet, 73.